People are confused today and want answers. And why shouldn't they? Like a granite fist from out of nowhere, the coronavirus has delivered a staggering gut punch to the entire world. Greetings. My name is Paul A. Miller. This is the fifth of a series of uh, videos that the ADC or Anabaptist Disciples of Christ Planning Committee is posting to the ADC website. Our purpose is to inspire us to provide pastoral care for those whom the Lord has given under our charge during this time that we're not able to meet for weekly fellowship. In last week's post, Brother Bill Mullet gave us good counsel regarding dealing with confinement. This week, we will continue with another C word, conspiracy. Dealing with conspiracy is our topic today. Conspiracy theories are nothing new. Every crisis, large or small, triggers reiterations of the same conspiracy theme, it seems. Predictably, a crisis of this magnitude that shuts down the entire world triggers conspiracy theories in similar magnitude as well. Sadly, Christians seem to be enamored with these conspiracy themes in particular because churches have been shut down to limit the spread of the uh, COVID-19 virus. How should church leaders deal with the growing proliferation of conspiracy theories among us? What should we say when on the one hand, our president, governors, and public health officials issue stay-at-home orders and social distancing limitations that are to be obeyed. When on the other hand, unofficial experts on social media contend that it's all just a hoax and it's part of a conspiracy to control the church and bring in a new world order. Now, some conspiracies are th so far out that we kind of dismiss them instinctively. I read a post recently that noted how that Jesus' return will be heralded by the sound of trumpets. And if you combine the last name of President Trump with the last name of Vice President Pence, it's trumpets, which sounds like trumpets. Conclusion, Jesus is coming soon. Now, we believe or under, we agree with that conclusion, but not with the way in which we got to it. It takes gullibility to a new high and biblical interpretation to a new low. But most of the conspiracy theories that the coronavirus has triggered are actually new versions of an old theme that the rich elites of this world or the Illuminati are in this case conspiring to things like sicken the whole world, inject everyone with a virus that's dangerous, implant chips into everyone and to and control us in a way that they can reduce world population and other ungodly objectives you're familiar with that whole series of of uh, of themes these two examples that i just mentioned are so extreme that they appeal mainly to the extremists among us while where where we are more susceptible is the increasing suspicion being raised by moderate voices 
that government officials initial overreaction has set them on a path to where the economic and social effects of the cure are worse than the medical effects of the virus itself and that we should be left to ourselves to go out and about and develop herd immunity. Now this is a classical catch-22. There is no clear way to prove or disprove its validity. This question will be shrouded in uncertainty and it'll stay that way. So let me ask again, how should church leaders respond to people who are increasingly convinced that the virus is a hoax and government overreach should be disregarded? Well, my response is, so what? What if it could be proven to be a hoax? What if it is a liberal leftist conspiracy to shut down the churches of America? Let's say for argument's sake, that's all true. So what? There is nothing really that we can do as members of the kingdom of heaven to effect change in this reality in the kingdom of this world through politics or resistance. Our call as earthly residents of the kingdom of heaven is to represent God in whatever culture that he places us. This is the call that has been uh, the call of the church for all ages. For 2000 years, the church has dealt with whatever culture that God has placed them in. And this is no different. So how should we deal with conspiracy? Three brief thoughts. One, push back against speculation about things that cannot be known with certainty. Paul wrote to Timothy in Ephesus to stop those teaching what is contrary to the truth. Don't let them waste their time in endless discussion of myths and spiritual pedigrees. These only lead to meaningless speculations which don't help people live a life of faith in God. That's from the New Living Translation, which I chose for effect. Push back against uncertain speculation. Number two. We must avoid the polarization that conspiracies cause. Let us not allow our people and our churches to become immobilized into inaction in the kingdom of heaven because of our extreme views about the conditions in the kingdom of this world. The divergent views that cause us to polarize can cause us to become unable to act at a time when a high level of action and preparation is the order of the day in the kingdom of heaven. Number three, each of us has finite amounts of time and energy. Let us stop squandering our limited resources on what we cannot change in the kingdom of this world. We need to reserve or preserve our resources for the harvest of souls in the coronavirus aftermath. The parable of the sower comes to mind where the cares of this world caused fruitlessness. Push back against this squandering of our resources in endless speculation about things which we cannot change anyway in the kingdom of this world at the expense of proper preparation in the kingdom of heaven. In closing, 
Paul's words of warning about the confusion of spiritual gifts in 1 Corinthians uh, 12, 14 verse 8 come to mind. Perhaps they are relevant for church leaders in this time of coronavirus confusion. And so I direct these words to us as pastors. For if the trumpet shall give an uncertain sound, who shall prepare himself for battle? If the leaders of our churches indulge in speculation about uncertain things that have no clear answer and will, will stay that way, then, no one, then our people will not be preparing themselves for battle. Let us call our people to the real line of battle where those who are confused about the destiny of their souls in the kingdom of this world can be brought to the certainty of eternal life in the kingdom of heaven. Brothers, let us not indulge in mindless, endless, meaningless speculation, but let us focus on what we do know with certainty.